What's up, everybody? Welcome to Game Nights. This show is sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. This is a really cool episode. We are going to be playing with the brand new pre-constructed commander decks from Doctor Who. Woohoo! We love a good pre-con battle, and we brought some of our best friends from the office to play today. We got Rachel Weeks and Mr. Infect himself, Craig Blanchett. Uh, spoiler alert. There is no infect included in, in the pre-con decks, which is actually why we chose Craig to yes, be on this episode, goodness. because we cannot possibly die to infect uh, in this pre-con environment. But if you want to get a hold of these pre-cons or any of the sweet singles inside, make sure you head on over to cardkingdom.com slash command. That's our affiliate link. it will take you directly to Card Kingdom, and they have a huge inventory of cards, including these Doctor Who pre-cons. You may find some really spicy cards that you want to brew around, or you want to build up another deck around one of the brand new commanders. Well, cardkingdom.com slash command is the place to go because not only are you going to get the cards you need but they're also going to ship it to you in one convenient package so it all arrives on your doorstep ready to go just take it out of the package sleeve it up and you are playing commander just like that cardkingdom.com slash command you'll support the show that you love and also get the cards that you need yeah and of course once you get those cards you are going to want to protect them ultra pro makes the game accessories products that jimmy and i trust our own collections to just go to ultrapro.com slash command there you can find all kinds of sleeves deck boxes play mats they've got wall scrolls they've got dice they have everything you need to protect your game pieces and also to make your battlefield and your game room look amazing yeah so if you like deals if you like protecting your cards if you like jimmy and josh in the command zone go to ultrapro.com slash command well speaking of the command zone we also have another playmat that's live right now on kickstarter for a limited time only this is your best chance to get the go to combat playmat this is a limited time offer this is your best chance to get this playmat right here and right now this only runs until october 15th so if you do not pledge by then you will not have this opportunity so again go to kickstarter the link is going to be in the show notes below pause this video right now because it may be very close to that date of ending and you don't want to miss out on this opportunity yeah there's that qr code on screen you can just click on that i love there's a lot of easter eggs in this image one you may not have noticed on the banners behind all of the knights is the game knights logo and the extra turns logo ah, so, perfect yeah, yeah very cool playmat if you want to uh, show your support of the show then go order it right now because time's running out and of course, you can also support the show directly at patreon.com slash command zone. In fact, if you're a patron, you may have already seen this episode a day early because that is an exclusive perk that our patrons get. They get to watch extra turns and game nights a day early. They get access to our Discord where they can chat with Josh, myself, Rachel, and other members of the command zone, ask us questions, and interact with our awesome, fabulous community there. Big thank you to our patrons. We really appreciate everybody who supports us that way. Uh, one other thing, we are going to be doing a big giveaway at the end of this episode, as we always do. Ultra Pro has given us a bunch of swag to give away to you, so make sure you stick around till the very end. Okay, having said all of that, it's time to find out who ah. is going to win this game. <laughs> Let's get into it. How's it, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Game Nights. This is a cool one because we are playing with the brand new cards from Universes Beyond Doctor Who. This set is four pre-constructed decks with familiar characters, villains, and settings from Doctor Who's 60-year history. These decks feel like a real labor of love made by Doctor Who fans for Doctor Who fans. So we're traveling back through time and space to grab a special guest from the past, one of the classic, one of the original, one of the OG game nights. Hey everybody, it's Craig Blanchett. You may know me as Mr. Infect, and I'm here for another episode of Game Nights. And today we're adding Plane Chase into the mix. Plane Chase introduces a separate deck of cards called the Planer deck. So at the start of the game, we'll flip the top card and that's the world that we're on. Then throughout the game, we can roll a special Planer die to navigate time and space. Every player gets a free roll of the Planer die on their turn. And if they don't like the result, they can pay one mana to roll it again, and then two mana after that, and so on and so forth. Plane Chase feels so Whovian. You're traveling from plane to plane at random times, and it just means the game can change on a dime. My deck is Blast from the Past, led by the fourth doctor and his companion, Sarah Jane Smith. Both of my commanders care about historic spells, so this deck is loaded with legends, sagas, and artifacts to make them tick. 
Plus, I'll be creating a constant supply of tokens so I can build up a board and then crush my opponents with the classics. Today I'm playing Paradox Power with the 13th Doctor at the helm and Yasmin Khan as a companion. This deck has tons of payoffs for casting spells from zones other than my hand. So I'll be impulsively drawing, foretelling the future, and flashing back from the past, just like a Time Lord. Then, with all that extra value, I'll get the win in no time. Today I'm playing the Timey Wimey deck, led by the 10th Doctor and Rose Tyler. This deck wants to make the most of mechanics like Suspend and Vanishing by manipulating their counters with time travel. Plus, I've got some brand new time counter shenanigans that will let me dig through my deck, ramp up my mana, and even grow Rose into a game-ending threat. And I'm gonna be playing Masters of Evil, led by Davros, Dalek Creator. This deck is full of powerful artifacts, especially Daleks and Cybermen. And as my metal minions attack, my commander can refill my hand or empty my opponents. Then my enemies will face the true villainous choice. Either they lose or I win. Get in your TARDIS, it's time to battle. The doctor is in. Get ready to meet Wibbly Wobbly and Timey Wimey. Today, the doctor dies. All three of them. All right, everyone, welcome to the table. As always, it's time to reveal those Ultra Pro playmats. Ooh. Thematic, right? Yeah, dig it. Space. <laughs> yeah. They're from Theros, but they are space themed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, everyone has been on the show at this point many times. There's yeah. no one to get knighted. So welcome to Game Nights. Only, Only one may stand. stand. All right, everybody ready? Let's go. We are playing Plane Chase, so we're gonna flip the first card of the Planer deck, and we are on Besieged Viking Village. Oh, okay. This is an interesting plane because it needs creatures to attack, and it's very early in the game, so it's not really doing anything for anyone yet. We'll see if it sticks around. All right, I'm gonna start my turn. I'm gonna draw, and I'm gonna play a Temple of Epiphany tapped. And when that enters the battlefield, I will scry one, and I will keep it on top. Okay. Even though I can roll the planar die, I kind of want to stay on this plane. So mm. I'm going to pass the turn to you, Rachel. My deck overall just cares about plus one, plus one counters. So this seems like a great plane for me, and I would love to stay on this as long as possible. Okay. I will draw for turn. I'm going to play a Mystic Monastery tapped. And I can roll the planar dice for free, so I will roll. Nothing. Nothing. Pass. All right, I'll draw for turn. I will play this Temple of Enlightenment. And when that enters the battlefield, I will scry one. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that on top. And I can roll the planar die once for free, so I will. All right. Oh, planes walk. We out of here. Oh man, Jimmy, come on. That was my favorite plane. All right, that's the planes walk symbol. So we will go to the next plane, which is... Cold Hill School. Oh. This plane is really cool. It's from the very first episode of Doctor Who, and of course, is pretty relevant in my deck because I have a ton of historic spells. So I'm excited. If we stick around here, I'm definitely gonna get some value. Oh, this is perfect. I love this place. I also like it. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, the baddies. Okay, all right. Well, I will pass the turn to you, Josh. <laughs> well, this was really fortuitous for me because this plane and the plans I have for my very first turn, let's just say they're gonna be friends. Okay, my turn got more exciting. I'm gonna draw for turn. I am going to play a Foreboding Ruins and I will reveal a Swamp from my hand so that it enters the battlefield untapped. Then I'm gonna start by playing a Soul Ring. What, Jim, hey. what the heck, man? Yeah, so because of Coal Hill School, I will draw a card, since artifacts are historic spells. What? And it cantrips, <laughs> Jimmy! Evil, but I'm not done yet. What? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna tap the soul ring for two mana, and I'm gonna play another historic spell. It is lightning green. Oh, oh gosh, okay. you gotta be kidding me. All right, I will draw because of Coal Hill School. So Josh went last, but it's turn one, and he has three mana and a lightning greaves. Josh, we're playing pre-cons here, buddy. Slow down, okay, please? 
Somehow I played three cards and I still have seven cards in my hand. Oh this my is the God. best thing ever. Usually when you have a turn one soul ring, you've dumped a couple of cards out of your hand, so you don't have as many spells to cast, but because soul ring and lightning graves drew him two cards, Josh has all the spells in the world. I don't even think this is hyperbole. I think this is the best start I've ever had on the show. I could roll the planar die here, but I think as demonstrated, I like it here, so I'm not gonna do it. Craig, go ahead. All right, I'm gonna untap. I'm gonna draw for turn. I knew what this was because I scryed it. And All I right. remembered. And I remember. And I totally remember that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna play an exotic orchard. Yeah. And I'm gonna play historic spell as well. Okay. Oh, nice. I'm gonna play Heaven Sent. Whoa! Mm. New saga. Yeah. And that will start at chapter one. So I will investigate, which means I will make a clue token. So turn two, I get to play Heaven Sent, which is a really, really good card in this deck. It'll give me clues now, which will help refill my hand. And then later on, I'll be able to cast it from exile, which is exactly what my commander wants. So this is like a value that I'll have for the rest of the game. And I'll draw a card because of Coal Hill School. Wow. All right, and I think this is probably a bad place for you and I, Rachel. Yeah. So I'm going to roll to try and prevent Jimmy and Josh from having another epic turn. Planes walk. Nothing. Uh, I did not have an epic turn, by the way. Yeah, it wouldn't be True. another. It would be True. your first one. <laughs> <laughs> I would like another, though. <laughs> and that's it. I'll pass to you, Rachel. I will untap, and I will draw for turn. All right, I will cast a Time Beetle. Ooh. Cool. This card is one of the best two drops in my deck because it cares all about time counters. I'll be able to manipulate any permanent or suspended spell anytime I can deal combat damage. I am thrilled to have this down on two. Unfortunately, that is not historic, uh, but I am gonna try and get off this plane. No. Here we go. Nothing. Nothing. All right, I will pass the turn. Okie dokes, untap, upkeep, and draw. I'm gonna go ahead and play a command tower, and I'm gonna get historic with it. Here comes an arcane signet. Nice. Nice. When I cast that, because we're at the Coal Hill School, I get a draw card. <laughs> okay, so I got my value from the Coal Hill School, and I definitely do not want Josh to have another turn with this in place, so I'm gonna try and get us out of here. I'm gonna roll the planar die once for free. Hey! Oh, we out! Uh, I am disappointed to be moving away from Coal Hill School. I was looking forward to drawing a lot of cards, but that's how it goes with Plane Chase. All right, let's flip the next card of the planar deck. Ood Sphere. Ood. Ood. <laughs> At this point, I am the only player with a creature on the battlefield, and I can use it to convoke out non-creature spells. So that means my time beetle is also a mana rock. Feeling good in the oud. <laughs> cool, dude. Thanks. <laughs> I do have an extra mana, so I will tap my arcane signet and just roll a die one more time. Nothing. It's your turn, Josh. Okay, I will untap. I will draw. I am going to play a swamp, and I am going to cast a Dalek Squadron. Oh no. Dalek Squadron is so good right now because the board is basically empty. None of us have any way to block a 3-3 menace at this point in the game. We're just gonna take a lot of damage, aren't we? I am going to equip the squadron with these lightning greaves. Somehow the lightning greaves go onto the Dalek Squadron and that means it has haste. Oh gosh. Oh, no. Normally my opponents would see this, they would know to hold back their creatures and it might be hard to get in. However, I have those lightning greaves so uh, they didn't even know this was gonna happen and they couldn't prepare for it. I guess it's a 3-3 menace swinging in on turn two. There was no preparing. <laughs> So I am going to go to combat and Jimmy, I'll swing at you for three. And because it has Myriad, I will make a token copy of this creature that is attacking Craig and one that is attacking Rachel as well. Squadron indeed. Okay, go to blocks. Craig, no blocks. This little beetle can't block. No blocks. So I didn't think this was that good of a card when Josh played it, but now that I see it in action, this card does work. Exterminate, exterminate. I heard I should say that a lot. All right, so everybody takes damage and then the tokens go away at end of combat. Bye bye. And then I have a free roll of the planar die, which I will do. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And I suppose this plane isn't doing much for me, so I'm gonna pay one mana to roll a second time. Chaos! All right, well I can go to creature from each of you, but Rachel, you're the only one that has a creature, so I will goad that beetle. Oh, my poor beetle. I will goad it by saying, exterminate. <laughs> okay, well it looks like I'm not tapping this time beetle for mana. 
the Ood Sphere specifies that if a creature is goaded, it can't be tapped for any reason other than to attack. Luckily, it's a good attacker. I just don't have anything with time counters on it yet. All right, that's all I can do. Craig, your turn. All right, I will untap and I will draw for turn. After I draw, my Heaven Scent is gonna go to chapter two and I will investigate, which means I will make another clue token. Nice. I'm gonna play a forest for turn. I'm gonna play a sisterhood of Karn. Wait, they have Karn in Doctor Who? <laughs> it's the sisterhood of Karn. Karn? Sisterhood of Karn, you say? It's a different Karn. Okay. Karn. And that will enter with a counter on it. It's a 1-1. One, one. So looking at the cards in my hand, I think I'm gonna be playing a lot of spells from Exile this game. So hopefully this thing will get pretty big pretty fast. I just hope my opponents don't realize how threatening it could be until it's too late. All right, I will tap my Sisterhood of Karn using the Convoke ability on Ood Sphere. And I will cast a Farseek. Sure. And I will search my library and I will find an island and put that onto the battlefield tapped. And I want to see if we can planeswalk, so... Chaos. Chaos! Oh, all right. I could goad everybody's creature, but because the Lightning Greaves gives Shroud, all I can goad is the Beetle. I guess that Beetle's coming at Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my turn. Pass to you, Rachel. All right, I will untap and draw for turn. I'm gonna play Deserted Beach as my land for turn. Well, because we are in the Ood Sphere, it seems appropriate that I suspend Inspiring Refrain with three time counters on it. And look, it's a nude. Ooh. That's what a nude looks like. Yeah. So I don't love taking turn three off and not putting anything on the board, but everybody's boards are developing a lot faster than mine and my hand isn't going to help speed up that process. And because my beetle has to attack anyway, I might as well get a little value out of it. Well, my time beetle is twice goaded, so Jimmy, you're getting attacked. I can't block because I have no creatures, so I'm gonna take one damage and go to 36. Time pinch. <laughs> when the time beetle deals combat damage, I get to time travel. I only have one thing with time counters on it, so I will remove one from Inspiring Refrain. Oh, nice. So in two turns, you draw two cards now. Uh huh. a little faster. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think I'm good on this plane. I'm gonna pass to you, Jimmy. All right, I will untap my stuff and draw my card for the turn. I am going to a two mana, and I'm gonna cast my doctor's companion, Sarah Jane Smith. Ooh. Sarah Jane Smith is one of the longest running companions in Doctor Who history. And she's an investigative reporter. So of course, she investigates. I'll be able to get some value immediately with this and hopefully it's gonna help me out over the course of the game. I will tap Sarah Jane Smith because of the convoke ability from Ood Sphere. And I'm gonna cast Hero's Blade. And that is a historic spell. So it's gonna trigger Sarah Jane Smith's ability. And I'm going to investigate and make a clue token. And then I will play my land for turn. It is a Celestial Colonnade. And I'm gonna go ahead and roll the planar die one time here. Chaos! Chaos. Oh, well, my poor beetle. All right, chaos ensues. I'm gonna go to every creature that I can. So that's gonna be your time beetle, Rachel. <laughs> yeah. And your sisterhood of Karn, Craig. Cool. And Josh, I can't target your creature because it has shroud. All right, that's gonna do it for me. Pass turn to you, Josh. All of my opponents did stuff on their round of the table, but it's coming back to me and none of them have blockers available. That's a really good sign. I need to deal damage to my opponents. And it looks like I've got the green light. All right, I am going to go to combat. Jimmy, I will come at you with the Dalek Squadron. And I took that personally. Exterminate, exterminate. <laughs> and that will trigger Myriad, so I will make two more Dalek Squadrons. One coming at each of you, Craig and Rachel. Go to blocks. No blocks for me. I will take three, going down to 34. None for me, I will do the same. Me, three, and I will go to 33. Then at the end of combat, those tokens will get exiled. I'll go to my second main. I'll play my land for turn, it's an island. Then I will tap for four, floating one, and I will cast my commander, Davros, Dalek Creator. This is the perfect setup. I have just dealt three damage to each of my opponents, and now Davros specifically cares about my opponents taking three damage. It's almost like the Daleks were created for exactly this purpose. And then I still have that one floating from the Soul Ring, so I'm gonna tap Davros for a black using the Convoke on Ood Sphere, and I'm gonna cast Feed the Swarm. No! Oh. I'm gonna destroy that beetle, Rachel. <laughs> Beetle got beat up. <laughs> I don't think 
any of the targets I have for Feed the Swarm are really very threatening. I just want to be mana efficient. I think I just got to squash the bug. Yeah, poor Rachel. <laughs> Pay to life, Josh. Yep, okay. <laughs> that <laughs> beetle will go to the graveyard. I will go to 38. Ugh. Losing this time beetle is so bad for me. I have nothing going on, and now without my time beetle, my card draw isn't gonna show up for two more turns. Ugh, it was so brutal. I could roll the plane or die, but I like this plane, I think, so I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna stay here. And then before the end step, I'm going to equip my lightning greaves over to the Davros. Seems good. And then I'll go to my end step, and because I have an opponent who lost three life, in fact, all of you did, my commander's gonna trigger, and I will make a 3-3 three, three Dalek artifact creature token with menace. And each of you now has a villainous choice. So for every one of you, you have to decide, do you discard a card or do I draw a card? The choice is easy here. I am not gonna give Josh more cards when he's got more mana, resources, and damage on board than the rest of us. We know what happens if you give Josh Lee quiet card draw. You lose the game. Josh already drew two cards, so <laughs> Josh cannot draw too many cards or you have to kill him. Craig? I will discard a card. Okay. <laughs> this is for the time beetle. Okay. I will also discard a card. Okay. <laughs> All right, I still got a three for one. I'm happy true. with it. I mean, I do like drawing cards and I think I would prefer to have the cards, but it's also good when your opponents have to discard cards. It's emptying their hands and they can't do that forever. Otherwise, well, they won't have anything. Well, that's it, Craig, go for it. I'm gonna untap, draw for turn, and my saga will go to chapter three. Each of you takes one damage. And that did not take anybody to zero. I will put it into exile, and then I could cast it again this turn. That's pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna tap three to cast my commander, the 13th Doctor. Nice. Because that was a spell not from my hand, that's gonna trigger my Sisterhood of Karn, and I'm going to double the amount of counters on it. It is now a 2-2. Two -two. Okay. It's gonna get a lot bigger. So I'm finally able to get out my Doctor, which synergizes great with my Sisterhood. Now when I cast anything from anywhere other than my hand, I can put a counter on something and double the amount of counters on my Sisterhood. Hopefully that happens a lot this game. Then I'm gonna cast a Carpet of Flowers. Oh. Pretty good. But there's only one island on the, wow. on the board so okay. far. This is a well-known, very powerful card. In the right metas or at the right pods, it can just give you a ton of free mana. Unfortunately, right now, I'm the only one with an island and I only have one. I'm done with islands, you know, for this game. What? Yep. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to declare attacks. Yep. Rachel, I'm sorry. Yeah. Part two coming at you. Well, I guess I'm glad it's only two. I will go to 31. Okay, second main, my carpet of flowers will trigger. There's only one island. That is correct. So I will make a red mana, and I'm going to tap my 13th Doctor from the Convoke from the Ood Sphere. Yep. And I will cast Heaven Sent from Exile for the second time. Cool. Wow. That will enter in chapter one. So I will make another clue token. That's a spell I cast not from my hand. Yep. My commander will trigger, and I will put a plus one, plus one counter on the 13th Doctor. And that's also gonna trigger my Sisterhood of Karn, and I'm going to double the amount of counters on it. Pretty good. Boy, next turn it's an 8-8 or bigger. Could be a 16-16. Nice. Oh my gosh. Aren't you oh, glad yeah. you spent that Feed the Swarm? Yes, I am glad. <laughs> <laughs> this is a decent turn from Craig, and I think that Sisterhood will probably get scarier a little faster than I thought. Still, no evasion, no trample, nothing like that. I'm making tokens, I can always chump block it. I don't think he's a problem for me. Okay, I will not roll the planar die for this turn. I'll go to my end step, and my commander's team TARDIS ability will trigger, and I will untap both of my creatures because they both have counters. Nice. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this. All right. Craig has now assembled a pretty nice engine here. At least someone's doing something that's not Josh. This deck's game plan is in motion. All right, pass turn. All right, I will untap and remove a time counter from Inspiring Refrain. And then I will draw for turn. First, I'm going to cast an Arcane Signet. Sure. And then I'm going to pay three to cast the iconic Sonic Screwdriver. Oh. Oh. All right. It does it all. Man, I do not like taking this whole turn off to develop my mana, but any creature I put into play right now is not going to be enough to block what's on the board. All I can do at this point is wait for my card draw to come off suspend and hope I can do something more impressive next turn. Well, everybody else has rolled chaos. Maybe it's my turn. Uh, I will... Play hey, we're out all of here. Right. Out of here. That means we're going to a brand new plane of... 
Lake Silencio. Ooh. Shh. This plane is bizarre, giving every card split second, but I'm really paying more attention to that chaos effect. Six damage to a creature on the board is the perfect effect to be able to pick apart Josh's board little by little. So let's just hope we roll some chaos. Well, that chaos is pretty good. I'm gonna pay one and roll again. Nope. Nothing. All right. Pass. All right, I'll untap my cards and then I will draw a card. Okay, I'll tap four and cast Nissa of Traken. There's a Nissa too? A blue Nissa. There's a Nissa and a Karn. Both different. Nissa. Nissa is a historic spell, so that's gonna trigger my Sarah Jane Smith, and I will investigate and make another clue. And finally, when that enters the battlefield, it's a legendary creature, so I will have Hero's Blade attach itself to her. So she's now a what? 6-6. Six, six. This card just does it all in my deck. <laughs> because I'm gonna have a lot of extra artifacts lying around. So when it does attack, I can sacrifice them to draw cards and tap down other creatures. The value is pretty nice here. I am <laughs> gonna just go ahead and roll the planar die. Not Nothing. Okay. And I will choose not to roll it again with my extra mana. I'll pass turn to you, Josh. Mm -hmm. So it's my turn again. Jimmy and Craig were able to put out two blockers, but Rachel, she's got nothing on her board that can stop my attack. And all I need is one opponent that I can get a free attack on with my Myriad. So things are still looking good. Okay, I'm gonna go to combat and I will swing Davros and the Dalek Squadron at Rachel and Jimmy the Dalek Token at you. Exterminate, 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 exterminate. <laughs> Exterminate! <laughs> On that attack, Myriad's gonna trigger, so I'll make two token copies of it, one attacking Jimmy, one attacking Craig. Remember, all of this stuff has menace. Go to blocks. I will take three. Going down to 31. I will take six. Going to 25. I'll we'll also take six. And go to 26. Okay. Oof. Big attack. All right, so it's gonna get a little bigger here. I normally like to, you know, get my value and draw cards and whatever, but I feel like my opponents are still kind of in setup mode. I think I'm just gonna hit the gas and try to end this game quickly. Then I'm going to tap six, and I'm gonna cast Wound Reflection. Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's pretty good. So we're all gonna take more damage at end step? Basically, the amount of damage you just took, you will take again at end step. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, wound reflection. That's like a old staple right there. I am not liking it in this situation with Josh's board. Josh has a board that we can't block, a commander that's gonna keep generating him value, not to mention wound reflection triggers on every single end step. So if we start attacking each other, that's just gonna kill us even faster. Feels like this game is going to end way before I have any chance to do anything. But before that, I have to roll the planar die because I get one free roll. Mm. Nothing. Ooh. And then I'll move to my end step. I will create a 3-3 three, three Dalek token with Menace. And then you each get a villainous choice once again. Craig, would you like to discard a card or should I draw one? I'll discard a card. Wow. Rachel? Uh, I have two cards in hand. You can draw, Josh. <sighs> Sorry, guys. And Jimmy? I will sacrifice the last land in my hand so that you cannot draw a card. Oh, okay. And then Wound Reflection is going to trigger. I believe that's three to you, Craig, six to you, Rachel, and six to you, Jimmy. Oh, gosh. That was a big turn. Uh, oh my God. Dad, this is so bad. Can anyone answer this? Can anyone just like answer that? Josh? So let's kill Josh. I'm in. We are now at the point in the game where if we don't team up against Josh, we're pretty much guaranteed to die to his board state. I don't want that to happen. We need to team up and kill Josh. All right. <laughs> the doctors unite. It's not that bad. There's, a, there's like two. I'm at 19. They're Three. screaming about exterminating us <laughs> during the attack phase. <laughs> they could, I could turn the volume down a little. <laughs> I'm not worried, this always happens. The doctors always team up against the villain and the villain always comes out victorious in the end. Uh, what, that's, that's not what happens? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna untap and draw for turn. My saga is gonna trigger and go to chapter two. I will make a fourth clue. There's still only one island on Josh's board, so I will make one red mana. Okay, you're floating one red. Then I'll add three. I'll cast my doctor's companion, Yasmin Khan. That will trigger my sisterhood and my commander, and I'm gonna stack it so it will get a fifth counter and then double. So the sisterhood will be a 10-10. Girl power. Yeah. After the whole discussion of killing me, I don't like that 10-10 much. <laughs> so I have this big sisterhood, but Josh has this pesky blocker in the way. 
However, the chaos ability on Lake Silencio allows me to possibly do something about that. So I gotta try and roll chaos. All right, and before I attack, I'm gonna roll the planar die to see if I can get some targeted removal. Chaos! Nothing. Oh man, of course I roll a nothing. I guess we'll just send everything at Josh and hope he runs out of blockers eventually. Okay, so now I will enter attacks. Craig, I would like to help you out in this combat. Let's do that. I'm gonna tap my arcane signet for white. <laughs> and Josh, I'm gonna path to exile your Dalek token. Oh. oh. You're gonna create a path so that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> a path for that sisterhood. I really hate to have to use such a powerful card in a moment like this, but we gotta do anything we can to take down Josh's board state and get him for a bunch of damage. Okay, the token will get exiled. Exterminate. Yeah. Exterminate. Exterminate. <laughs> I will search my library for a mountain and put that onto the battlefield tapped. Alrighty. And I'm going to attack Josh with both my Sisterhood of Karn and my commander, the 13th Doctor. Okay, Jesus, what is that, 13 damage? 13? <laughs> okay, well, I have no more blockers. Thanks, Jimmy, I will take 13. And go to 24. All right. Okay. Things are happening. Then I don't think I want to roll anymore. I might want that two mana to sack for a clue. So I will declare end step. I will untap both my creatures. Ooh. Okay, I'll pass to you, Rachel. So I built up my board a little bit, attack Josh for a bunch. I'm feeling good. Hopefully Rachel and Jimmy can pull their weight. I will untap and my inspiring refrain will come off of suspend. Sweet. I'm gonna draw two cards off the inspiring refrain, and then it will send itself back on suspend with three time counters on it. And then I will draw for turn. So we formed Team TARDIS, and we're doing our best. Unfortunately, this refrain doesn't give me any removal spells. I don't have anything with haste, but what I can do is set up for a big attack next turn, and my best way to do that is with my Rose Tyler commander on board. Okay, I'll cast Rose Tyler. Sure. And then we're gonna oh. cast Four Nox, and that'll enter with four time counters. Knock, 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 knock. Rachel is playing cards and doing things, and they are not very helpful. This is not what the doctor ordered. And then I'll cast this flesh duplicate. Ew. Yum. And it enters the battlefield as a copy of Yasmin Khan. Hmm. It enters with three time counters on it because it also has vanishing. I have a board now, but it's slowly leaving me. <laughs> and then I will roll the planar die. Really need chaos. Chaos, um, nothing. Oh. All right, take it away, Jimmy. Ugh, Rachel can't deal with anything on Josh's board. Guess it's just up to me now to do as much as I can and hopefully find some kind of answer to get out of this situation. Okay, let's untap all of my stuff here and then I will draw a card for the turn. To kick things off, I'm gonna tap for four mana and I will cast Perry Brown. Sweet. That is a historic spell, so that's gonna trigger Sarah Jane Smith and I will investigate once again, creating a clue token. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna go to combat and Josh, I'm going to swing Sarah Jane Smith and Nissa of Tracken at you. So I'm gonna sacrifice three clues. That's gonna allow me to draw three cards and tap up to three target creatures. I don't wanna tap any creatures cause you're already tapped out and I like my other friends over here. Uh huh. So I'm just gonna draw the cards. One, two, and three. Uh, okay. I have no blockers, so I will take eight. And go to 16. Nice. See, Jimmy is contributing. Jimmy is sacking tokens to not tap down stuff because he made a deal with us. Very nice of him. What a good guy. And then let's go ahead and roll the planar die. Ah, nothing. But I do have an arcane signet, so I'll tap that for one, and I'll roll the die one more time. Chaos. Chaos. No. Ah, nothing. All right, that's it for me. Pass turn. At the end of my turn, Josh is definitely still alive. We did a pretty good job getting him down to a lower life total, but it's not gonna be enough. Looks like Josh is gonna get another turn. I could be dead. Jimmy could be dead. We may just be dead. Let's hope it's not too bad. Man, I love this time of year. Me too, it's spooky season. The perfect time to brew up that zombie or spirit deck. Yeah, Halloween is great, but fall is also the season of value because our longtime sponsor, Raycon, they're having their big anniversary sale. To thank everyone who's shown them support in the past six years, Raycon is offering 20% off everything on their site with select products up to 40% off. We both use Raycons all the time, especially their everyday earbuds. They have that perfect in-ear fit and 32 hour battery life that make them great for listening all day 
day long, whether I'm flying to a con or just chilling at home. And there's just no other brand that offers the same premium audio quality at Raycon's reasonable prices. Plus, this past year, they expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech. So whether you need earbuds, speakers, or even an air purifier, don't miss out on the anniversary sale value. These deals are so good, it's scary. <laughs> Get it? Yes. Yeah. No, yeah, I got it. We all got it. Celebrate Raycon turning six with their biggest sale of the year going on now. Hurry now to buyraycon.com slash command and use code birthday to get 20 to 40% off site-wide. That's code birthday at buyraycon.com slash command to score 20 to 40% off. Again, buyraycon.com slash command. Josh, do you know where we put the... What is going on here? How's it? How's it? Why is everyone dressed like you? I know, isn't it great? I got tired of going to a dozen different websites looking for new employees, but now with my Quai guys, I can be everywhere all at once. Why don't you just use Indeed, the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. They have powerful tools that streamline the hiring process and save you a ton of time. Like Indeed's hiring platform, where all the hard work is done for you. They match you with quality candidates the moment you sponsor a post, and only ones whose resumes meet your job description. In fact, Indeed delivers four times more hires than all other job sites combined. That is impressive, but could we hire more Joshes? I think we have enough. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash command zone. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash command zone. Just go to Indeed.com slash command zone and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Again, that's Indeed.com slash command zone. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. You browsing for some new tech? Yeah, I'm building Team Out and Architect. Ooh, how about Zergo and Ojitai? Did you just drag and drop that card image directly into your deck? Yep, with Architect, you can drag and drop card images from EDH Rec or Scryfall directly into the deck list. No typing required. That is so cool. Ooh, okay, check this out. I'm gonna drag and drop Dragon Storm into the deck, and then boom, I'm gonna drop a bunch of dragons on the battlefield. A nine drop, huh? Seems ambitious. It was just for the pun. Architect is the best place to browse, brew, and playtest commander decks. Just go to architect.com slash command zone to get started. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com slash command zone. Okay, I will untap all my stuff here. So Josh gets another turn here, which we um, were really hoping he didn't, if I'm honest. Because if Josh has a single thing in his hand that does more damage, I could be dead. Jimmy could be dead. We may just be dead. Hopefully this turn's not too bad. I could roll chaos. I guess I should roll first then, because okay. it'll yeah. determine my attacks. Yikes. Okay. okay, here we go. Ah, nothing. Ah. I'm gonna go to combat. Jimmy, I'm gonna swing the Dalek Squadron and the Dalek Token both at you. Exterminate! No. Exterminate! We got it! Exterminate! We got it! Exterminate! Ah. So there's a Myriad Token attacking Craig and a Myriad Token attacking Rachel. Go to blocks. I will take three. <laughs> going down to 25. I also will not block. I will take three, going to 16. All right. So I'm gonna take six and go to 14. And then second main, I am going to cast a clockwork droid. Sure. Interesting. And then I will tap my remaining five mana and I will cast the Valyard. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Oh snap. So remember the villainous choice that we hated making? Well now we're making it twice. Oh good. This doesn't deal extra damage to us, so it's not really speeding up the game, but now he's gonna be winning the resource battle. This is not good. All right, and then I will go to my end step. In response, Yeah. I'm gonna sack a clue to draw a card. Oh, okay. Ooh, not bad. My commander will trigger. Definitely one of you took at least three damage, so I will make a 3-3 Dalek. And also, you will each face a villainous choice twice. Yeah, all the cards in my hand are good. I'm going to let you draw two. Okay. Oh my gosh. I will draw two cards. Rachel. Yeah. You only have two cards. Josh, you can draw two. Jimmy. I'm a man of honor. I will discard two cards. <gasps> wow, Whoa. Jimmy. Wow. Josh cannot oh, draw any Okay, wound reflection will also trigger. However much damage you took during combat, you will take that much damage again. Oh, jeez. Now I have nine cards in my hand, so I am going to go to discard. Ha <laughs> ha, it's like oh. you didn't even draw. <laughs> I'll discard two cards. <laughs> 
All right, Craig, All right. that'll uh, end my turn. Go ahead. Mercifully, this turn here wasn't as bad as it could have been. We're not immediately dead, but there's no way we survive another turn with that wound reflection on board. I mean, if Josh untaps, we're just dead, right? Yeah, we're in trouble. Yeah, right now, looking at the board, I have blockers for all the scary stuff. I have a lot of card advantage. I'm actually feeling pretty good. So it's now or never. If he gets to untap, he's gonna win. My heaven scent is gonna trigger for chapter three. So you're all gonna take one. Okay, I go to 12. I'll go to seven. I'll go to 15. And then the saga will go into exile. I mean, you can recast it, make the sisterhood bigger. That's not nothing. Craig has this huge creature that could one-shot anyone at the table, but no evasion. And Josh has put up a ton of blockers, so I don't know how we're gonna get around this. I'm gonna target Josh with my carpet of flowers. So I'll make a red mana. Okay. So I'm looking at my hand, weighing my options, and what I have in hand isn't helping me much. I'm gonna go dig in. Then I am going to tap Yasmin Khan to exile the top card of my library, and it is Quantum Misalignment. Hmm. Okay, that'll remain in exile. Well, that is not what we were hoping for. Um, start rolling, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, I would say right now you need a roll. All yeah, right. right. Yep. So this chaos ability is still there. I've got to get rid of Josh's blockers. And if I can roll chaos, that gets rid of one of them for free. So I guess we'll try that. I'm going to roll the planar die. Oh, come on, chaos. Here we go. Yeah, this roll from Craig is really important because I do not want him to get chaos. I'll still be able to block him, even if he removes one. But I just need all my blockers for Rachel and Jimmy's turns as well. So come on, not chaos. Come on, chaos. Ugh. Uh, planes walk. Oh, no. Oh, I really wish Craig rolled chaos there. At least we could pick apart some of those blockers, but now we're gonna planes walk? <sighs> well, I hope it's at least something good. Well, let's see what joys this next plane brings. The moon base. The moon base? The moon. Whoa, this creature gains flying until end of turn. Oh! Yeah! Oh my goodness, we did it. It's evasion. Craig can give his creature flying for two mana. All of those blockers on the ground don't do anything right now. Wait, what? Josh, Whoa! how many flyers do you have? Do you have flyers? Uh, no. Daleks are ground creatures. Oh, crap. I left up four blockers, but the Daleks don't fly. Daleks do fly. What? <laughs> they fly? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't my Daleks fly? <laughs> We're on the moon, baby. Let's go. No my sisterhood is about to... Take to the skies. That's right. This is amazing for me. I get to pay two to make any creature that I have get flying. And guess what I have? A 10 10. That could be a 20 20. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use that red and a blue from my island to cast my Heaven Scent from Exile. Chapter one, make a clue. But more importantly, it'll trigger my commander and my sisterhood. So I'll put a counter on Yasmin, and my sisterhood will become a 20 20. Uh, wow. The sisters have been recruiting. This yes. is sick. <laughs> I'm loving this. What okay. happened? <laughs> then I'm gonna play a sonic screwdriver. Which my doctor built herself. Oh, very Ooh. nice. And then I'm gonna tap two to use the moon base's ability to give Sisterhood of Karn flying until end of turn. Oh, baby. Are you sure you wanna do that? I feel like there might be better uses of two, maybe. There could be, there yeah, could be. clue! <laughs> yeah, all those clues, you can draw cards. Come on, Craig. <laughs> And I declare attacks. Josh, I swing at you for 20 in the air. Exterminate! Who's got the boots now? Oh. <laughs> you stupid moon. I should have had the normal villain plan, which is blow up the moon. Or take it over and turn it into a laser beam of some kind. All right, I take 20. And I die. And then I got exterminate and die. Yay! Wow. Wow. Doctors, no unite! Yes, we did it! We killed Josh Lee Kwai! Craig, you are my hero. Now, how do we deal with you? Okay, I'm gonna go to my end step. My quantum misalignment is going to remain exiled, and because of my commander's ability, I'm gonna untap my creatures with counters on them. Oof. Kill Here Craig. We go. Let's go, yeah. Craig. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm looking at the board, and I'm still pretty far behind. And now Craig has a lethal threat that he can get flying. So if Craig untaps, I'm dead. 
In my upkeep, I will remove time counters from all of my permanents with time counters on them. Then I will draw for turn. When I go to my main phase, I draw from four Nox. Nice. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna cast a Soul Ring. Sweet. And you know what? I'm going to cast the 10th Doctor. Woohoo! Not bad. This attack trigger puts something on suspend, which normally means it'll take a long time. But because of the 10th Doctor's timey-wimey ability, I can time travel three times, which means I can get that spell off of suspend if I live to next turn. So I'm hoping for a big hit here that'll make a real impact in this game. All right, I am going to pay two mana to give Rose Tyler the gift of flight. And I will go to combat, and I will send Rose through the air your way, Craig. When she attacks, I have two attack triggers. Okay. First, the 10th Doctor. I'm gonna reveal until I hit a spell. All right. It's Rory Williams. <laughs> cool. So I will suspend that with three time counters on it. And I'll put the rest on the bottom of my library in a random order. Giving a two drop suspend three feels bad. I needed something that was gonna put a real dent in the board and I don't think a two drop with lifelink is gonna do it. Now I have four cards with time counters on them, which will put four time counters on Rose herself. That means she's a flying six six. Ooh. Those are my two attack triggers. You got six in the air coming, Craig. All right, I have no blocks. So I will take six, going down to 16. Okay, I've done what I can. I'm gonna use the rest of my mana to try and get us off the moon. Come on. All right, I think we need to get off of this plane, so I'm gonna roll that planar die. Mm, stay. Chaos! Oh. I get some two twos. So I will take a creature from each of your graveyards and they will be face down on my battlefield as two two Cybermen. <laughs> Pretty good, yeah. two, two free two twos. Can't block flyers though, so I am going to try and roll <laughs> that planar die one more time. We really need planes walk here. Yes, we do. <laughs> Chaos, oh, again. Chaos again! <laughs> well, more two twos that can't block a flyers. Lot of chaos in this game. <laughs> I only have one creature in my graveyard. I have no creatures in my graveyard anymore. Okay, I will make one more two two Cyberman. Uh, Instant board, though. Yeah, we got a little board. We got stuff going on. I've done stuff. Go ahead, Jimmy. Rachel had a really good turn here, and she's built up a pretty impressive board, but I don't think it really matters if we're still on the moon base, because Craig can just win the game by giving his board flying, so to me, that's still priority number one. Hmm, well, things are looking real scary, so I think I'm just gonna start things off by rolling the planar die. Chaos or nothing, chaos or nothing. <sighs> nothing. Uh, nothing. <laughs> okay, well, we gotta get out of here, so I'm gonna try and planeswalk again. I will tap for one mana here and roll the die. Oh man, Jimmy, come on. Ah, it happened. Wait, that's so good. Yes. Oh my goodness. I am so, so glad that I rolled the planes walk here. Let's just hope this next plane is not going to be even worse for us. Well, it can't be worse than the last plane, so let's see where we're going. It's TARDIS Bay. Ooh, okay, oh, what nice. happens? Home sweet home. Pretty cool. All right, the TARDIS Bay. This is a pretty cool effect. I'm gonna get some value off it, but more importantly, we're not on the moon anymore, and I'm not immediately dead to Craig. Well, the moon base is gone, but I still have my sonic screwdriver around, which can give something unblockable. Hopefully nobody remembers that, and I can make it till next turn. Because of Perry Brown, the first historic spell I cast each turn has Convoke, so I will Convoke out the fourth doctor. Cool. That's gonna trigger Path of Ancestry and the TARDIS Bay, so I'm gonna first scry one. Hmm, don't like that one. I'll put it on the bottom of my library. And now the TARDIS Bay's trigger will resolve, and let's cascade and see what I get. You need three SCMC or less? Yep. Okay. Right. There it is. Oh, man. <laughs> that was been a progress. Oh, my gosh. Finally, because the fourth Doctor is a historic spell that will trigger Sarah Jane Smith, and I'll make a clue. Because of my commander, I can look at the top card of my library. Ooh. Hmm. Interesting. That's he likes cool. it. Ooh. This is, I like it. I like it indeed. I will cast the Curse of Fenric. Oh. Ooh. So it's gonna enter on its first chapter. 
So I'm gonna target Craig's Sisterhood of Karn, Rachel's Rose Tyler, and my own Perry Brown. Oh, interesting. Oh. Okay. So all those creatures are destroyed. And then we each create a 3-3 green mutant with death touch. Oh man. Okay, so I can't take one of them out. Looking at my board without a 2020, maybe I wasn't as far ahead as I thought I was. I gotta figure out another plan. And I cast that saga from the top of my library, so that will trigger the fourth doctor, and I'd like to ask y'all, would you like a jelly baby? I get to make a food token. Nice. Now that I'm assessing the board again, I'm actually a little more afraid of Rachel than Craig because she built up that Cyberman army and she can now go wide. I'm at a really low life total. That is definitely scary to me. So I think it's time to see if I can get Craig on my side. Craig, I have a proposition for you. I can tap down your stuff and take you down to 10 and you're in a pretty bad spot against Rachel. So I think it's better if we actually team up against Rachel. Mm. Basically say, I'm not gonna hurt you at all. You don't attack me. Maybe you attack Rachel. Do your best, but just don't kill me. I will take that. So Jimmy points out that Rachel's the biggest threat here, and I agree, Jimmy. She's a threat. Do All I right. get a counter offer? Yeah, yeah. counter offer. Go for it. So originally I was dead to Josh, and then I was dead to Craig, and now Jimmy's trying to kill me with a deal from Craig. I feel like I'm not the enemy here. If I don't kill you next turn, and I get to just tie me why me once, I'll send. Everything at Craig. Wow, that's pretty good too. I don't think there's any way I can win if I take a deal with Rachel right now, but against Craig 1v1, I might have a shot. So I'm gonna have to say no to Rachel and hope this works. I think I gotta take the deal with Craig mm, here. I'm sorry, I Rachel. Tried. I just want to tie me, why me? You might still be able to. There's a chance Craig can't kill you. <laughs> there's right? hope alive. That's true. Okay, I'm gonna go to combat and I'm gonna swing at you, Rachel, with my Nissa. Yep. When it attacks, I'm gonna sacrifice three artifacts, a clue of food and a talisman of progress. So I will tap down your 10th doctor, your mutant, and your Yasmin Khan. Okay, in response, I will activate my Yaz and I'll exile the top card of my library. It is the moment. Okay. I can't cast that now, so it'll just stay in exile. And the 10th Doctor and the Mutant will be tapped. And I will also draw three cards. Seems good. Okay, and Rachel, you still have a 6-6 six, six coming at you. All right, I'll block with a Cyberman. I will take no damage. And it will die. All right, that's all I can do. I'll pass turn to you, Craig. All right, I did what I could against Rachel. I took out a blocker and tapped down her scariest stuff, so now it's up to Craig to hopefully finish her off, or at the very least, get a good amount of damage in. All right, at your end step, I'm gonna tap Yaz to impulse draw one. It is a bigger on the inside. That's pretty cool. And I can cast that until the end of my next turn. So I will untap, draw for turn. My heaven sent is going to go to chapter two, which means I'm going to investigate again. Next is my carpet of flowers trigger. Rachel has one island. I will make a red mana. Red mana floating. Okay, I'm gonna start by tapping Yasmin to impulse draw my top card. It's a temple of abandon. Scry land. Okay, I'll play that as my land for turn. When it ETBs, I'm going to scry one. Hmm, yeah, I think I'm gonna put that on the bottom. All right, I am going to cast Truth or Consequences. Whoa, mm. interesting. Fact or fiction? Kind of, sort of. <laughs> Seeing how this plays out could give me a lot of information. Life totals could change, I'll have new cards in hand. So let's get this resolved, and then I can figure out the rest of my turn. Okay, we're gonna vote in a second, but first, because we're in the TARDIS Bay, I'm gonna cascade. One, I'll, keep going. That's not it. Two, nope, nope. too nope. big. Too big. Three, keep going. Nope. nope. Land. Soul, Soul ring. ring. All right, All works right. for everybody I'll else. That. And the rest of these cards will go to the bottom of my library. So that's a spell I cast not from my hand. My commander will trigger, and I will put a plus one, plus one counter on my mutant. Okay, and now we gotta do the vote for truth or consequences. Let's hand out dice. Let's say even will be truth and odd will be consequences. So just put your hand over and we'll all reveal at the same time. At this point in the game, it feels like the damage is way worse than the card draw. I have gotta play it safe here, pick truth, and hope that coin toss goes my way. So everybody's got their number, and we're all gonna reveal in three, two, one. Two truths and a consequence. <laughs> My favorite TV show. <laughs> okay. There's two truths, so I will draw two. Oi, oi, oi. And then there will be three damage dealt. Rachel, you are odds. Jimmy, you are evens. No. Jimmy, you will take three. <coughs> I will take three and go to four life. So in this deal with Jimmy, I softly agreed to not attack him. However, 
I can't do anything about random damage. I guess this doesn't violate our deal, but Craig, come on, man. I didn't want to get hurt on your turn. Okay, I'm going to roll the planar die to see if we can get off this plane. Nope. Nothing, no. nothing. So I'm going to tap five to cast bigger on the inside. And I'm going to target one of my clue tokens. Mm. That's a spell I cast not from my hand. I will put a plus one, plus one counter on my doctor. So now it's a four, four. And then I will tap that clue to give myself two mana. I will cast my TARDIS. And that has Cascade because of Bigger on the inside. This is ridiculously yeah. flavorful. <laughs> I'm taking this, yeah, right? The TARDIS is great because it's just value all over the place. But the really big thing is that it is flying. And neither Jimmy nor Rachel can block it. Doesn't have haste this turn, but next turn might come in handy. Okay, let's start cascading. I'm looking for a one drop. It can't be a two drop. Nope. Nope. Nothing slow. Nope. Nothing. Nope. All big nope. stuff. Fives nope. and sixes. Nope. Sixes, nope. three. Nope. Hey! hey. <laughs> all right. Okay. So all of those will go to the bottom of my library, and then I will scry two. I'm going to tuck both of those and draw a card. That was another spell that I cast from not my hand, so my commander will trigger another time, and I will put a plus one, plus one counter on my commander. So now it's a five, five. Makes your attacks way better. Okay. And Rachel, I will attack you for five with my commander. Okay. So Craig doesn't attack me with everything here, so I'm just going to take the damage. I'm going to preserve the bodies I have on the board and hope a little time travel can make a real impact in this game. I think I need all the help I can get from these Cybermen. No blocks. Okie doke. I will take five, going to seven. All right, and that's my turn. Wait, Craig, that's it? That's all you could do? I made this deal to try and get Craig to commit resources to Rachel and get her on the back foot, but he didn't really do that. Oh boy, things are still bad. On my end step, I will untap the fam. Oof, this is such a brutal engine. Pass to you, Rachel. Untap. In my upkeep, I will remove time counters. Nothing gets cast from Suspend. I will draw for turn. And then when I go to my main phase, I draw an additional card from Four Nox. All right, somehow after all this plotting against me, I'm still alive, which means that this turn I get to tie me why me. With the cards I have in hand, I can't take Craig out. So instead, let's use my combat phase to get another card on Suspend for maximum value. All right, I think the only attack I have is I will attack Craig with this single mutant. I have an attack trigger from the 10th Doctor. Honestly, Rachel only has a card draw spell and a small creature on suspend right now. So I'm not that worried if she decides to timey-wimey. But depending on what she flips off the top here, all that could change. Here's hoping that we hit a big spell and we got a big impactful board to win this game. So I'll reveal until I hit a non-land. Land, land, a talisman of oh conviction. Hey. I will suspend that with three counters on it. Ugh, okay. Look, bow ties are cool, but not what I was hoping for, honestly. It doesn't do anything to kill these players. <laughs> this is great. Couldn't ask for a better scenario for me. And now we're in blocks? Uh, yeah, yep. blocks. 3-3 three, three Death Touch coming your way. No blocks. I will take three damage, going down to 13. Well, we didn't play the 10th Doctor not to time me, why me? Yeah! I think it is time to do it. I will pay seven and activate his ability and time travel three times. Cool. Yasmin will go up to four vanishing counters. Nox will go up to five. And I'll cast all the suspended cards without paying their mana costs. Seems pretty good. The first spell I'm going to cast off suspend is Inspiring Refrain. Ooh. Since this is my first spell this turn, it's going to cascade and has to be less than six. Here we go. Something big. A land. A land. No. A Sibylline Soothsayer. Interesting. All right, I'll cast that. Ugh, once again, not what I wanted. Does this deck have any payoffs? I mean, I guess it'll at least put another spell on suspend, so maybe we'll have better luck with that one. When it enters the battlefield, I reveal cards from the top of my library until I reveal a non-land card with mana value three or greater. So let's see what we get. Nope. Two, three. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> the ninth doctor, you go on suspend with three time counters. So, Rachel's doing a lot of game actions this turn, but nothing that she's doing really looks super impressive. These cards she's playing don't seem to affect me very much. Another cool card doubles my upkeeps, but it doesn't do anything now. <laughs> 
So now we'll resolve the inspiring refrain. I will draw two and send it back on suspend. After right. that, I will resolve my last two spells, the Talisman of Conviction and Rory Williams. When Rory enters the battlefield, he has partner with Amy Pond. So I can search my deck for Amy Pond. Wow. And that will go into my hand. Okay. So I don't have a threat, but I do have a removal spell. Maybe it'll slow Craig down and keep me alive another turn. And finally, I'm gonna cast Kraken Time. It enters with three time counters on it. And when it enters the battlefield, I will exile the 13th Doctor. Mm, sure. I will send it to my command zone. I'm upset about losing my commander, but I think I could survive without it. And plus, if I really need her for my plans, I could always cast her again. Not a huge deal. And before I end the turn, I want to roll that planar die. Nothing. Well, all right. Well, that is the best I've got. Take it away, Jimmy. Okay. We are really getting down to the wire now. Rachel didn't pop off quite as much as I thought, but even so, both her and Craig are equally big threats in my eyes. They both have sonic screwdrivers, which, remember, can grant unblockable. So if I make one wrong move, I could be dead. It's very, very scary right now. My saga, The Curse of Fenric, will go to Chapter 2. And I'm going to target your commander, the 10th Doctor, Rachel. Yeah, that seems good. He will become Fenric. Oh, he's big. Honestly, at this point, a 6-6 six -six is a threat. If I get to attack with it, it's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna look at the top card in my library. I don't have much going on right now, so I think my best chance of getting back into this game is just cascading into something sweet. So I'm gonna play the biggest spell out of my hand and hope for the best. I'm going to tap six mana, Whoa. and I will cast the Eighth Doctor. Whoa! Trying to get all the doctors out here. Yeah. That's nice. When I cast that, that's going to trigger the TARDIS Bay, so let's go ahead and cascade. Let's see what we get. Land, land, Time Lord Regeneration. Hmm. Okay, well, I only have one target for this, so I will cast this, targeting my commander, the Fourth Doctor. This is more like a trick spell in case someone tries to remove your commander or board wipes. Not looking great in this situation, but I tried. I also have another cast trigger from Sarah Jane Smith, so I will make a clue. And then the Eighth Doctor will resolve. When that enters the battlefield, I mill three cards. Once during each of my turns, I can play a historic land or cast a historic spell from my graveyard. Nice. So I will play the Trenzalore Clock Tower from my graveyard. Wow you. Yeah, wow you. I feel like the game's not gonna go long enough from here to get full advantage. No. <laughs> I guess I will go to combat, and Rachel, I'll swing at you with Nyssa, and Craig, I'll swing at you with the Fourth Doctor. When Nissa attacks, I'll sacrifice a clue and my arcane signet, and I will tap down your 6-6 six, six, Fenric and Rory Williams. Yeah, that lifelink. And I will draw two cards. Go to the blockers. No blocks for me. Well, I'll block what I can. This Cyberman's getting run over. It will die. And I will take four going to nine. Jimmy's turn really hasn't done much to me, and I still have the rest of my board intact. Maybe I can take out a player when it gets back to my turn. I'm feeling all right. Okay, well, I'll try to roll the planar die and see what I get. I'm completely out of options here. I think the only thing I have left to do is just try and planeswalk off of the TARDIS Bay and find somewhere that is a little more hospitable. All right, well, let's see what happens. Nothing. I do have one untapped land, so I will tap the Trenzalore Clock Tower for blue, putting a time counter on it, and roll one last time. Planeswalk! Okay. Oh man, he's got a cascade. Okay. Well, this could be interesting. Everything is so close right now that a new plane could radically shift the course of the game. Anything could happen on this next plane. Let's see what fate has in store. All right, let's see where we're going. It is the Drum Mining Facility. Uh -oh. Oh, snap. What did I just do? Well, this new plane can give plus one, plus one in haste, and it's about to be Craig's turn. I'm passing the turn and giving a haste effect to the one player that needs it most. Oh, Jimmy, you may have helped me kill both of you. Thank you. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Uh-oh, I think I just lost the game. Yeah. Oh, that was a big roll. Yeah. Uh, now, this plane does have a chaos ability that could end Craig's turn. Maybe Craig rolls chaos and he just ends his turn, doesn't do anything. There's always a little beacon of hope. All right, well, that means I'm on my end step. Pass the turn, Craig. All right, on your end step, I'm gonna tap Yaz to impulse draw one. It is last night together. Oh, fitting. <laughs> well, if we weren't dead before, we're definitely dead now when Craig reveals an extra combat step card. I don't even think I need this plane. With just last night together, I can take out both of them. 
That's that. Hope smashed. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna untap, draw for turn. Heaven Sent is going to go to chapter three, which is gonna deal one damage to each of you. Yep. I go to six. I go to three. So you both have no mana available, right? You guys are tapped out? Fully tapped out. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna crew my TARDIS using my mutant. Now it's a 2-4 flying creature. Okay. Mm, flying. Then I'm going to cast Last Night together. Targeting the TARDIS and the Yasmin Khan. The TARDIS is a 4-6 and Yasmin is a 6-6. Six, six. Oh boy. Mm, those are our life totals. And next I'm gonna activate my sonic screwdriver, giving Yasmin Khan unblockable until end of turn. Oh gosh. Okay, I declare attacks. Yeah. And I swing Yasmin at Rachel and the TARDIS at Jimmy. No blocks. No blocks. Well, yes. I guess we die. It's the end, but the moment has been prepared for. I don't wanna go. So I grab my companion and hop in my TARDIS and swing for the win. Wow, that was a really crazy up and down game. I was playing the villain deck and the game really played out that way. If I just got a turn, I could almost take everybody 3v1. But at the end of it all, really excited to see Craig get his first Game Nights win. I am very, very happy today. If you're a fan of Doctor Who, you're gonna have a blast playing these cards and just seeing them for the first time. It's always cool to see how they use magic game design to bring out the story you know. When you look at a card and you're like, of course that's what it would do because that screwdriver does everything. These decks are full of technically interesting designs. There's so much stuff for advanced players, even though they are just pre-con products. Overall, great fun game, but the best part about all of it, killing Josh Lee Kwai. There's no better time than getting around the table and just murdering Josh Lee Kwai. Ah, oh, just makes me feel so happy. All right, well, big win for Craig. Congratulations, Craig. We are so happy Craig. for you, Craig Blanchett. It only took like six years, <laughs> maybe seven. This is the not technically the first recorded win for Craig. He's but won on is, extra turns before, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and also an early, early Game Nights episode that we never ended up releasing. He did crush us at the table during that game. Yeah, I think like so episode stole like that from him. three or four. <laughs> We ended up never cutting it together, and he's never let us uh, forget about that. Like, I did win one, you just didn't put it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we should say Craig, you know, trounces us regularly regularly on off-camera games. Yeah, all the time. But still, it's nice uh, for Craig to finally get a win on Game Nights. Yeah. So if you want to get your hands on any of these pre-con decks from Doctor Who, just go to cardkingdom.com slash command. That is the sponsor of our show. And the best place to get all of your magic singles, products, anything at all. And the great thing about cardkingdom.com slash command is the fact that once you make your order, Order, you get that cart full of a whole ton, big list of mm -hmm. cards. They don't come in separate packages. They come all at once in one package on the same day. And of course, when you get those cards, sleeve them up, keep them protected by heading on over to ultrapro.com slash command. Uh, one thing I really like to do when these sets come out is I get a separate binder. And so that way I can put the doctors and their companions in the same binder so I can mm. see them next to each other. Nice. Because they kind of get, they'll definitely get lost yeah. in the regular binder, right? And because they play specifically with each other, I love getting when they're small binders and putting them all together. And then it's just a really convenient way to start building and sort of going from that new environment there. So ultrapro.com slash command is the place to do so. And of course, you're going to get a, uh, a awesome benefit of using that website, which is supporting the show. Yeah. And another benefit of us being sponsored by UltraPro is they give us a ton of product, which we then get to give away to you all out there, all you Game Nights fans. Yeah. We also sign the playmats from the episode with all of the players. We send those out to the winners. We throw in some magic products as well. Uh, if you would like to enter to win that stuff, Jimmy, well, how do they enter? You can first go to Twitter and use the hashtag Game Nights, Nights with a K. All you have to do is tweet using that hashtag and a link to this episode, and then you're entered to win that way. If you're on Facebook, head on over to our Facebook page, find the post that's sharing this episode, go into those comments, reply to those comments, and tag a friend or two that you think would also enjoy Doctor Who 
Magic the Gathering. Maybe they're a Doctor Who fan that's never played Magic before. Oh, yeah. Either way, tag them on Facebook, and that is how you enter there. And then finally, on Instagram, it's the simplest. You can make any post you want related to Magic the Gathering or Doctor Who and use the hashtag Game Nights, and then we'll be able to search it up that way, and that's how we'll count those entries. So again, you can have a single entry in all three of those for a 300% chance of winning over just having one entry. Most importantly, you have one week from the release date of this episode to enter, after which we are going to be announcing the winners on Twitter, and you won't be able to enter any more. So make sure you get those entries in before then. Yeah, of course, once we've announced the winners, you can no longer enter to win. So That's how it works. Don't waste any time. Just go right now. Get on all three platforms. Enter real quickly. It's free stuff. Free stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We also have a Kickstarter ring. Don't forget to check that out. Right. Uh, go to combat. We just got lots of stuff going on. You can always find that in the deck lists and all that stuff in the show notes below the video. So make sure you check that out. There's a lot of information there and some of it will pertain to things that you want. So just check it out. <laughs> All right, everybody. This was a fun one. Congratulations once again to Craig. And uh, Craig. we have, of course, much more Doctor Who coverage coming up on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, we're going to finish out all the pre-con upgrades and all uh, you know all our set reviews and things like that. So Make stick sure around. Yep. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Peace.